Okay, so my name is Simon Duffy. I run uh, the Sheffield-based think tank called the Centre for Welfare Reform. And much of my life has been um, involved in trying to bring about reforms in social care. So I'm going to speak for about 10 minutes and then introduce the other members of the panel that, that were just up, Cheryl and, and David and Alexis. And then we're going to have a similar panel session at the end to review um, so the broader questions. But I thought I'd start by putting this talk in the context of this concept of it's our community, which is the kind of name we've given to this event, uh, the previous event that we did and other events we've got planned. And that these are events are not just for the sake of events, they're really part of a strategy to see if we can bring about some significant change. And they go to the heart of the question that Alan touched on in his talk, which is, you know, what does this mean, community? Um, to a large extent, I would agree with him that what, what went under this rubric community care often ended up being the transfer of uh, resources and services and personnel out of old institutional services into better services. Physically, we might think of them as in community but they weren't really part of the community and they certainly weren't a function of community life. And so what we're signaling by saying it's our community, I suppose, is I think our intent is that we do need to break into that third space, that there's a role for families. It's a it is a natural part of family life that we take care of each other, but it's also impossible for families um, to do that on their own without support. There's a role for, um, funding and for professional staff, although those two things are not necessarily aligned because my work in developing personal budgets was to say to people and families, actually, this is your money. So you should be able to decide how it's shaped. Um, but there's also a role for the community itself in, um, in many of the ways that uh, were touched on in that first session. The idea of, of doing this, I suppose, come thinking about the community in this different way and thinking about social care. I mean, this event is for anybody in the country, but we do have a special interest. It's rooted in Sheffield and we do have a special interest in seeing, hey, what could we do ourselves in this brilliant city, Sheffield? Um, because I suppose in my work, often what would happen is when you start to talk about reform of social care, people would often retreat to different ideological positions. So I would often find that people, whether they were coming from the disability movement or from professional services or from the family movement, often people would take up highly opposed positions. But I remember bringing together a group of people actually at a meeting of the Socialist Health Association for Yorkshire in Sheffield um, two years ago to discuss social care reform. Um, and I was really encouraged by what happened when we changed the question. When we started to say, what do we want our neighborhoods to be like? A lot of the barriers disappeared. People could start to imagine the way in which they would like to live and they would like support to function in ways that are much more closely aligned, I think. So for me, that's the big missing, missing variable in a lot of the policy discussions. Angela Fell put, up a note about this in the questions earlier. I think this is, it's not because there are other important issues to think about, but that one's almost kind of on the map at the moment. And we constantly forget, I think, whether we're, we're at the sharp practice end of things or whether we're thinking about things from an academic point of view or policy making, what a weird place the United Kingdom and particularly England is. It is weirdly centralised. I often observe that, you know, Sheffield, which is a population of uh, 600,000, has got twice the population of Iceland, a country with a fully functioning welfare state, a parliament, a constitution, a president, um, and 78 municipalities, 78 municipalities, which would in Sheffield terms be 142, 140, 150 neighborhoods. We have 142 neighborhoods in Sheffield. 
we actually have 140 primary schools. I don't think these two things are disconnected. People know what neighborhood they're in. But just as Sue Yendel was pointing out, we, we don't say this is a neighborhood that cares. We don't have any structures to enable caring at a community level. We don't have anything organized at a neighborhood level. We don't have any structures for people to exercise responsibility or care. Things do happen, but we've really created a system that makes it about as hard as possible for good things to happen at that scale. And, and the interventions that happen uh, by the system, by social services, uh, even with good intentions, are really the in, in, interventions of a kind of colonial system back into our communities. Uh, people are kind of driving into communities, telephoning into communities. Nothing is really part of the community. And so we're left with the divide Alan described, which is largely families coping with negligible support and with increasing levels of poverty. Isn't it heartbreaking to hear of carers increasingly going to food banks? What kind of society have we become? I mean, I, I, I'm not so, it wasn't so long ago when food banks were just something we didn't have. Now they're a supplement to our social care system. Uh, so we, we're dealing with a kind of social care poverty, disability poverty, poverty for some people in old age, uh, and certainly a system which is economically broken. Um, and we need to address, and, 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 and as some of the previous speakers said, we do need a new economic settlement. But I think we really need to look at the other structures that go along with that new economic settlement. I think that we need much greater emphasis on human rights and the right to control. At the moment, I'm working with the European Union uh, on guidance around self-directed support for all European states. And that guidance is based on human rights. In this country, human rights don't really get a look in, do they? The United Nations actually examined the performance of this government after 2010 in the light of austerity and said it was, in, it was breaching the human rights of its own citizens, particularly of disabled people and older people. Um, and yet that issue gets no attention. So we need to think very differently, I think, about social care, I think. I think the challenge is, is not merely to think about this as some technical solution that we should just go, oh, wouldn't it be nice if we had X? Academics, charities, commissions have all been kind of proposing some kind of X for a long time. But what we haven't really done is, is build a kind of movement to argue for X, to persuade for X, to build X in our own places now. There are things we can do now, even in this kind of broken economic settlement, even in this weirdly centralized state, there's lots of things we could do differently now. Sheffield really could just reinvigorate its neighborhoods. Tomorrow, the, the council, we've got a new council and we're looking forward to finding out what that means. But uh, that council could say, right, let's take our neighborhood seriously. Other councils are doing that. So Sheffield could. And it could say that social care should be a function of neighborhoods tomorrow. That won't solve all the other problems, but it will make a big difference. I, I just want to end with one other point before I bring in Cheryl. Anne talked uh, quite rightly about the importance of good residential care, but also asking ourselves what that should be. Um, I've done quite a lot of work in Finland. Fin Finns seem to me to have a really good approach to this, which is that you'd, you'd have a residential care home maybe attached to a primary school because kids and older people could eat together, be together. And I think we really need to make it abhorrent, this kind of privatization of care. And not, it's not just the privatization, which is of course an exporting our money into the hands of people who are building large, really new wave institutions. The average size of residential care is enormous. Um, but we need to stop exporting our people with the money sending them out of our communities. If we can't, we cannot begin to take seriously the idea of community and neighborhood without a firm commitment to ensure that 
really nobody should be asked to leave. We should be organizing things at a scale that ensures that people can stay. And only in that way, I think, can we show the commitment we need to show to each other um, in, in our need for assistance and for community. So um, I'm really glad that we've got the range of speakers we have today. We're hoping to take all of the information that comes out of this, this event and to combine it with a previous event and to start to really develop a kind of manifesto for Sheffield. And I hope we can continue to work with Alexis who's promised to work with us on making some of this happen now.